try to make available to some brothers and sisters. Some of I and I favorite um, audio songs, clips and bites, bits and bites we can say, um, from our Ethiopian um, faithful brothers and sisters of various different, um, I won't call it denominations, Wengala we mean evangelistic in that sense. Um, but do not get it twisted in other words, you know, because there's, there's, there's the evangelistic ones over here and there, and we are also um, Wengelawit in that sense that we are about the gospel, right? The gospel of His Imperial Majesty of Negus and Neges, all right? The gospel of His Imperial Majesty. Let's give a little bit of light right here, all right? So the good news of Ketamawi Haila Selassie. Mm hmm. All right, so let us. Um, touch on this uh, Shabbatical portion, and we're still in Devarim, right, Devarim, which is the Hebrew book of Deuteronomy, right, Devarim or Devarim or the words, the words. I want you to make note and take some notes of this, right, in this particular, in this particular uh, Torah portion. So, grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture, and bring a willing and attentive mind of faith in the Amen, the, the faithful and the true witness, and Amen be Yeshua's, be Christ's name, the true and faithful witness. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, the golden mean ratio, or the pi, the phi, right? That, 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 that fractal portion, you always in that small portion, but then everything else is built on that. So we're getting to the root and the truth of the matter and the word. This is what's key about this particular Torah portion is that it's Deuteronomy and Deuteronomy or uh, the Dagim and the Ethiopic means um, um, to repeat again, right? Again. And Degana, you send Dagim, you send Dagim to repeat, right? Now in the Hebrew is Devarim, Devarim. Right or Debori, right? Deba, Deba, Devar, Devar. The Ashkenazis, other Jews, they point the vowel to a V, but really it's a B, right? Really it's a B. So this right here is actually a B. And there's a whole bunch of debate about how Hebrew is really spoken. But for I and I, as Ethiopian Hebrews, we can go to our root and our truth. And in fact, in the reconstruction of Hebrew, we have also gone to I and I Ethiopic um, roots. Right, it's the root of the matter. So what we want to do is give a basic overview, and you see, we still have Ethiopia with divine heritage, right? And Lich, this is the the the, the last uh, vid and 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 sibkat and sermon and teaching and Timherit that we spoke on, right? Um, we have three here, but actually the fourth part was discipline. We're speaking of discipline 
in the local church and what is the, the bait? What is a bait? A bait is a house, right? And we once again in Yeshua HaMoshiach are in our Father's house. You understand? We're no longer orphans. You understand? Even if we find in ourselves um, so-called alone or in a singularity by ourselves, we are not truly alone. He has not left us as orphans. He has given us the, the comforter. You understand? The comforter, and that is the, the, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. And it's very important for I and I to receive the, the Holy Spirit. In fact, for us to really grow up to Him in all things. We may have the Word, we may have the Scriptures, but it's that Holy Spirit, that Yeshua HaMoshiach, that Gitachin Yesus Christos, when He spoke to the, the, the Hawariyat, who were formerly Dekamazamorit. So we see an order, right? We see a particular order, a particular system. And this system is the Mengishta Samayat, right? The Mengishta Samayat, which is the kingdom of heaven. Now, when we are born again, we are born into the kingdom of heaven. Now, the church, what is the church? We know the church is not just the building. You understand? His imperial mass, he teaches that the church is the faithful fulfillment of the, the Christian requirements of the Christ man, the anointed man or woman. You understand? The true son or God. There are certain requirements that we have to learn and grow. And this is where the real idea of church is so central. You understand? We want to teach a little more on what church really is. If we look at the Greek, it's ekkalio or ekklesia, which means those who were called out. They were called out of so-called the religious bondage. You see, we have to call out that people out of the religious bondage. It's something that we believe religiously, and it's not saying that everything is incorrect, but the religion has kept us into rites and rituals. But we have forgotten about the essential function, which is the function of the heart, you understand, which is the function of the consciousness, you understand, the function of the conscious of the spirit, you understand, we can deal with the, the spirit. Now, he says that, um, judge the tree by its fruit, you understand, by, by its fruit, what is the fruit? So we have to look at the fruit of the spirit, you understand, and we have to be able to recognize ourselves and our neighbor. But firstly, we have to be able to recognize I and I self. This is when we say in Rastafari, we say I and I. And the true meaning of I and I has become, in that sense, um, lost in this Babylon. You understand? Know like we say, Rastaism. So we say I and I and I and I. You understand? Know they think it means me and you. What does it mean, me and you? Is firstly, for mostly for a son or a daughter, it means I, the child, and the I, or the, the I, the father. But now the, 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 the repairing of the breach between God and man is only in Yeshua HaMoshiach. It's only in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach in spirit and in truth. So we have to get beyond even the imagery. You understand? Because the imagery is very important, yes, you understand, but it's secondary, you understand, to the Word, because it's first in spirit and then in truth. So when we say Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, it's one of us, you understand, and when we show these sort of pictures, some might say, oh, they're worshiping a picture. You, you haven't seen I and I bow down to any picture. You know, so you see, I haven't seen I and I worship any picture. Do not get it twisted, because he Satan sees ones are coming out and begin to recognize the truth. And, uh, and a lot of other things, you know, a lot of distractions are being given to us. This is why the Shabbat is so important. And once again, we say Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. This particular Sabbath, this particular sabbatical, called Re'e, right, Re'e, right? We, we've touched on it in previous portions, right? Mm. We've touched on them in previous portions, and where's I and I, when, where's I and I Torah portion list? I don't know if we have our Torah portion list right here. It might be in the other, in the other wing right now, right? The Torah portion list, you know what we're speaking of, right? The Torah portion list. And we're going to clear the board, too, and focus a little bit more 
you know, focus more squarely on this particular sabbatical. So we'll we'll seek to bring that, you know, bring that forward and everything. Uh, uh, give I a moment. my brothers and sisters um um you know there's a lot of works here going on and and hopefully you have that particular portion right there but basically if we just go to the scripture right here right we're in orit zedagim um orit zedagim uh, which is chapter ashara and or chapter asara an which is 11 and then kutel begins from kutel haya sedis right Haya uh, sadist, and we we call it eneho, eneho, right? Eneho, and in the good is 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 where nahu, and nahu means to behold, in other words to look and see. But in the Hebrew we call it re'e, re'e, right? So if you look at the chart, re'e, right? The Sabbath house reading, you notice that it's in the Hebrew is re'e, right? Re'e. Re'e, which means it's the same as Rai. Rai. Now it's interesting because uh, I think it's Stephen, Stephen, Estefanos, uh, Marley. He has an album called uh, Rai. You understand? It even shows the Ethiopic of it on the album cover. Some of you have probably have seen it and even checked out some of the songs and selection. We still have to check out a little bit more of it. But from what we hear, it's a very good album. Now, the, the r real point is that Rai. Rai means a vision. So there's a vision. It's not just seeing with our physical eyes or EAs, but it's seeing with our spiritual eye. You're saying our spiritual eye or in the spirit. So we have to receive the spirit. That's why we begin off with the Memphis Caduce, right? The Memphis Caduce of Wengela Wheat song. You know, one of, it's one of I and I personal favorite songs. Sometimes those who are around I and I will find I and I my bust out in song singing, you know, Memphis Caduce, Memphis Caduce, you know, yeah, here. You understand? You know, Exiavi here ante ne ante exiavi here ne. It's a gizyavi here's chayil. It it is the power of the sustainer, the power of Yahweh. He who is who he is. He who lives. You understand? He who be. You understand? He who is. He who was. He who is. He who is to come. The true and the and the and, and the the true and the faithful. You understand? The true and the faithful. For lack of a better word, we say God. You understand? But even that word, God, we have to overstand. This is why education is is the key. This is why he says to learn of me. So we're learning in this Torah portion of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Because he said that we may read the, the Bible or the Torah and the Psalms and the prophets and we think in them that we find life or eternal life. Or, but really, if we were to see spiritually, these are they which testifies of him. You understand? Know, of him. So it's like some say, and this is true, ones may pray for wealth, but they don't pray to the wealth giver. They may pray for health but not to the healer. You understand? They may pray for salvation, but not to the Savior. You understand? So they're praying for that gift, but they're not focusing on the root. And many times it's because ones either have not been taught this, like in religion. When we say religion, we're going to religio. Don't get that confused with hymenot. You understand? Because hymenot, the root of that, is totally different than our Western Gentile word religio. This is why the language is, is so much of the key, right? This is why language is the key. This is why the word is the key, all right? So here in um, Orit Zedagim, now, if you have your Schofield, get your Schofield Study Bible. Because in the Schofield Study Bible, let's, let's first turn it into English. Let's first turn it into English. And this will be the first... Um, posting, you understand, the first upload, and this is for the 47th, right, the 47th Torah portion, so here we go right here, chapter 11, we're at verse uh, 
2026. Now, if you look at chapter 11 from, from the 46th Torah portion, if you read and studied and went over, at least, at least to read it. We really highly encourage everyone to, to, to read the Torah portions, to follow along with these teachings, and to do their other studies, but at least become familiar with the word for yourself. Because you pray for the gift of the Memphis Caduce, the Holy Spirit. You understand? It's like the bank. It's like a bank. It's like a treasury. Like King David says under the Old Covenant that he would store up this word. He would hide this word in him so he does not sin. So that when the Spirit speaks, he can recognize, oh, Chan, that is his word right there. It's like a bank account. If we don't put anything in, we don't have anything to draw out of it. This is why we said the reading of the word, hearing of the word, first of all, the hearing of the Wengel, of the, the good news, the gospel, and then the reading of it, then after reading of it, the study of it, then after the study of it, the committing it to our mind, to our memory, what, what the Bible calls learning, learning it by heart. When we say, well, I've learned that by heart. That means this is the way that we very practically and, and in a very graspable way this is how we grasp the understanding, little by little. Like if someone says, well, I know this by heart, they, 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 they know it in their memory. You know what I'm saying? They can call it from memory. Then that word that we can recall by memory is truly meditatable. So when we talk about iditating. Like in the, in the previous Torah portions that we have touched on, the teaching, really the more of the gospel teaching of the good news, and a sonship in our divine heritage. We had touched on Psalm 19, right? 19, right? Psalm 19, I think it's verse 14, where it says, um, May the words of I and I mouth, or may the words of I mouth, may the words of my mouth. Each of us have to begin off with I. We have to begin off with, 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 with the person, with ourself. You understand? We have to be able to recognize ourselves. We have to ground ourselves. You understand? So that the I, who we be you know, individually, and the, the, the God, the Father, the Abba of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, in Yeshua HaMoshiach, as the, becomes one in this word, in our um, re, 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 receptance to receive, to Kabbalah, to Kabbalah, in our receiving of the word. As we've said and we maintain that, yes, we deal with the Kabbalah, but it's the Kabbalah of Yeshua. It's Yeshua's Kabbalah. In fact, when you overstand, you recognize that word in its, in its um, fullness. And, like whenever you read the word receive in English, in the English Bible, in the, sense, in the New Testament where Christ says, those who can receive it, let them receive it. Yovas, and now it might be that you are not able at first to receive it, but you must pray in the Holy Spirit for that receptivity and trust that your prayer you know, has been heard and will be answered in due time and due season. You know, and it's very important right here. So it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation, as we say, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable. That's a key word right there, acceptable in thy sight. So we study and show ourselves approved to who? To God. To God. And how do we know him? Based on his word, based on his testimony, and based on the testimony of those who have gone before Yovacen and those brothers and sisters who, who, are, who are more grown up or more mature, Yovacen, and who share with I and I, Yovacen, their true testimony that helps I and I to grow so that we can also be able to help in a time of need. You understand? Be able to help in a time of need. So it's to be, it's what's acceptable in thy sight, the most high sight. Oh Lord, Abertu, Adonai, Abertu, I father, his father, father of the house, my strength and my redeemer. Now, in um, Rastafari, this is something that I'm sure most Rastafari are familiar with this word sound. Make the words of I and I mouth and the agitation of I and I heart. Be, we act, we add humbly. Some say humbly acceptable. Humbly. And it's interesting that we, 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 we find that, that humility, you understand, and though it's not written here, we say, as Rastafari, be humbly acceptable in thy sight. 
Oh Ja, O oh, Rastafari, right? O oh, Lord, Abertu, I father, his father, O oh, father of the house, my strength. He's our what? Our strength. And our Redeemer. And I and I Redeemer. Now what does that have to do with this particular Torah portion? And and why are we first of all connecting those dots, as it were? Because in our own study, and study of this, we find something wonderfully amazing. You know, think we've been studying a lot on the barakat, on the blessing. We've been speaking on issues of 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 either wealth and 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 you know the whole situation of we don't have certain things and and money and and other things and how do we get together and how do we so forth and so on. We've been speaking about what has happened to us 400 plus years, and we might speak on you know um, prophecies fulfilled amongst us as the ethnic um, um, Hebrews, you also know as black Hebrews, black Jews, Ethiopian Hebrews, we as this diaspora, all right? Now, this Torah portion, and this is why I'm giving so much thanks, because I wanted to bring a teaching more on the blessing, as well as connecting word, sound, and power. And if you um, review or re remember some of the previous posts, you can see that's a, that's a topic that kept coming up about the word and, and the, the proper use of the word and, 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 and faith. You know, and what is faith? What is the true faith? What is the living faith? You know, and, and touching on the etymology, because it's necessary to get to that root so that we can get to the contextuality, you know, and because it was not revealed in English to begin with, but the translators, you understand, have translated their best. You know, majority. Others might not have, but that's on them. But it's the Holy Spirit that tells us, okay, study this, or, or seek this out, or search this out, and when we find what what the Holy Spirit wanted us to look for, then we recognize, oh, Chan, I, I've been wanting to, like, if I'm, if I'm teaching on something, you say, wow, I've been wanting to ask you about such and such, and, and you touched on it there. That's the Holy Spirit operating. You know, and that's, that, that's what um, Yeshua, Yesus, Geta Yesus said to uh, Etros, that was not flesh or blood, you understand, whether another flesh or blood or people, but it was not even the Eucharist, you understand, what we call the Shigawadem that revealed that, how Peter was able to see that Yeshua is the Moshiach, you understand, that he is Christ, when he asked, well, what do people, who do people say that I am? And who do you say that I am? And, and then Peter uttered that you are the Christ. The, the, the son of the living, right, of the living God, right, of the living God, the, the Bain Ha Elohim Hayim. So now here, this Torah portion, the first verse of this Torah portion in Devarim, let us just remind you right here, here's where we're at, right, in um, Devarim. Now notice what Devarim means in the Hebrew, it means words. These are the words. Right? These are the words, right? And now it's interesting because Bamarinya means or read the Torah, the dogim, of the repetition. So we have to ask ourselves, well, what words do we repeat? Do we repeat words of faith, of his faith, and Yeshua, our main B, Yeshua's name, do we repeat his words? Or do we read his words in a religious context and feel good about it, but then when we go outside in the world, we allow what the world has to say or the words of the world to direct you know, in our faith. We put faith in what the world says is going to be true. Or do, so whose words do we repeat? You know, and whose words do we repeat? Do we repeat the words of Jah? You know, and the words of Yah, of Yahweh, of Yeshua, of Jah and Joshua? Or do we repeat the words of the world. Now why is that important? Well let's first of all touch on this Torah portion. Now this Torah portion is interesting in many many ways. It's forty seventh weekly Torah portion of Parasha. Right? And those can study some of the background, the wiki page, or can get a copy of we have all five books, all five um volumes out now. You understand we have it, we have it available, but if you're not able to get that, you can still, and we advise ones to go to the wiki, check that out, and follow along as best as possible, or, or do as we did, download all of the Torah portions, you understand, so first get the, get the Sabbath uh, house readings, right, um, 
which is which is our chart, the one to fifty four for the fifty four or so weeks in the year. Now, this part shall also deal with Shalosha Regali. I was going to erase this, but I decided let me keep this right here because the Shalosha in the Hebrew is Salase, right? The 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 Shalase is Shalosha, right? Or Shalosa, Shalosha in the Hebrew, and that means three or in the context of Trinity, right? Now, a lot of people get confused about the Trinity because they, they are repeating the words of the world. Do you understand? They do not know his word, or they're reading the Old Testament, but they have a veil over their eyes because that veil is only done away with in Yeshua HaMoshiach, in that receptance of Yeshua HaMoshiach, as Peter said, as the Christ, as the Bain Ha Elohim Hayim, as the Son, the Son, the number one Son, Yosin, who brings I and I into that Sonship. So we might know that Edomawi Chayla Shalase, He is the Abba. But in order to approach Him in spirit and in truth, we need to put on Yeshua. You understand? We need to put on that garment, that garment, and we're speaking spiritually, we're speaking metaphysically, but we're using the types, these, as Christ said himself, if I told you earthly things and you do not um, comprehend the, these earthly examples, then how would you, these spiritual examples, because remember Adam, remember the, the, the black man is fallen, and humanity has fallen too. We know that the original man, yes, is a black man and African and Ethiopian, but all other peoples who are peoples have come from that original man. So that 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 hat yat, that original sin, which is the original breach between God and man, began with Adam. So if we say if we feel proud that Adam is the first man or the that the original man, the most ancient man is the black man, we also have to see this spiritually too. You see what I'm saying? More than just a pride mode, because remember, white supremacy and all of that, la la, rah rah, is a deception too. That white people have been deceived, you understand, into believing that, you know, that they are superior. You understand? Know Even in what has happened to us over the 400 plus years, if you read Torah, you recognize that it's Yahweh that said that he would bring this to pass, that he would raise up these people against his people. You understand? Because of their disobedience, because of their transgression. So we're not doing Jah's laws, but we are abiding to the best of our abilities, you understand, by man's laws. How hypocritical, how contradictory is that? You understand? And if you study Jah's word and the prophets, all that becomes clear. So we say the Afrocentrics and a lot of them, they mean well, but they have missed some fundamental points, some, some real fundam, even when we talk about melanin, we say, well, we got melanin, but our melanin needs to be spiritually charged, and apart from the true faith of Yeshua HaMoshiach, it is not spiritually charged, that melanin, that which was a blessing, in a sense, has become a curse, I mean, I mean just look at the type of diseases black people are getting, you, well, ones will say, well, it's a white man, it's such and such, well, true, Certain evil people, whether white or otherwise, even black, are parts of that. But really, let's get to the root. You understand? Some some don't want to get to the root. You understand? They want to deal with the, the you know the fruit. You understand? But the fruit is bad because the root is bad. You understand? So we have to get to the good root, right? Because uh, behold, you understand the very same in that whole behold the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. The what of David? The root of David. You understand? The root of David. So let's get to the root. So this portion deals with um, 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 the, the three pilgrim festivals. This is that trinity right there, that three. Right? We'll touch on that as well. But the Holy Spirit wants us to kind of scroll past the first and second paragraph right here. And we're going to touch on the third paragraph on page 171 of uh, 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 taken from the Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia. It says, in the Parsha, which is this portion, Moses, Mashu, or Muse, he set before the Beta Israel the choice. The choice. Right? Many are called, few are chosen. It is so much that few are chosen, and they've been called, 
then in a sense, from God's perspective, the choice is already there. God, Jah, is in favor. But now they have to choose. We have to choose. You understand? We're going to say we're Rasta, Rastafari, and do our own thing, or we're going to submit ourselves to the teaching of the King of Kings. You know, that's going to determine, and that is determining, and that will determine this, um, the choice between the blessing, right, the blessing, and curse. And we're not only speaking of spiritual blessing, but it must begin, you understand, it must begin first, you understand, in spirit. From God's perspective, it begins in spirit. You understand, most people won't notice you're blessed until they see, oh, you got some money or whatnot like that. And then they figure, oh, you're blessed, because they need to see that physical, because they are natural, they are physical. You understand, they, they have limited their, their, their full range spectrum. You understand, some can't see those things, so they say, well, whatever they don't see doesn't exist. And we know that that is foolish. Yo, this, so anyway, this part of Shah right here, it sets before the Beta Israel, the Israelites, the choice between blessing and curse, between blessing and curse. And so when we went over this a little bit earlier, just um, prepping ourselves and getting our and ourselves ready for this particular uh, Shabbatical time, because it's to remember the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? That, that is thinking about it, remembering, draw it to mind. You know what I'm saying? And, and see, thinking is the weakest, really. You know what I'm saying? Thinking, and when, when we look at all the aspects, all the commands, the key words that he gives us, if he says to remember, it does not mean um, to, like, some people say honor, but, but it really says remember. He says remember the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? So it's a function of the mind, but it's the, it's the weakest level of what we call the spiritual thinking. Well, I was thinking about it. Well, yeah, but that's, that's spiritual, but that is still one of the lower levels. But he gives us that gracious first step. You understand? It doesn't say, go here, go there, do this, do that. He says to remember. You understand? To remember. You understand? To remember. In other words, to, to, that choice is ours. Some people say, well, yeah, I remember the Sabbath. I wasn't able because of this or that. But remember his word is to remember. You know what I'm saying? It begins by that, that, that function of mind, that choice, really. Because once one hears the word, you understand, now they are responsible for it. If one hasn't heard it, or somebody prevented you from hearing it, well, you just didn't know. You know, the Almighty, John and Joshua, knows what, you know, knows what was in your heart. If you knew it, you would have done better. But if you didn't know it, you could not do better. So we have to recognize that. But this parsha right here is where Moses sets before the Israelites the choice between blessing and curse. So Moses, Musa, he instructed the Israelian in the laws. And these are spiritual laws, essentially. Though when you read them in the Old Testament, they seem to be physical rites and rituals. But in the New Testament... Right? In, in Christ and his kingly character, in, 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 in the New Testament, these are spiritual aspects. That's why it says that um, there's a veil over certain one's eyes in the reading of the Old Testament. I mean, ask many of the Messianic Jews, the real Messianic Jews, whether they are black or white, but if they have true faith, ask them. And they will let you know. And it's interesting when, you be, when your eyes begin to open up and you begin to say, oh, wow, this is Old Testament. But doesn't it say in the New Testament that you begin to see the over how Yeshua, how you fulfilled all of those Old Testament types, you know, was saying pertaining to this law. So he took it from being the law, which was administration of death, you know, was saying to be the law of spirit and the law of life in Yeshua HaMoshiach. But it all depends on what you're thinking, you know what I'm saying, and how are you thinking, how have you received it. You know what I'm saying? What do you have faith in? You know what I'm saying? Do you have faith in the world? Then that means the curse. Do you have faith in this Babylonian system and what they say, they, what they say, what they say, what they say? Or do you have faith in the word? You know what I'm saying? Do you declare the word? Jehovah's. Now Moses, he instructed the Israelites, the Israelites in the law, that they were to observe. Now it's interesting because the word observe also has to do with with seeing in that sense, or, or, or having that vision, or having that focus, that, 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 that perspective. When we say perspective is salvation, you know Because as ones are receiving the Holy Spirit, they're looking at this word again, and they're saying, I never saw it like that. 
You understand? Now, because your eyes are open, we were blinded to this, apart from the Christ of His Majesty, including the sing the law of a single right. There's a law of a single centralized place of worship, place of worship. You understand? This is also very key. Now, many of us still think it means a building. Or it means, like some say, Jerusalem over there. Or some may say this place or that place or this church. It does not be, that's not what the Father and the Son means. That's what religion, right? That's what religiosity and religion, in, in, the, in the worst, most pernicious Babylonian sense, religios, has done. You understand? But in the hymenos, we overstand and therefore we overcome. So Moses also, in this, in this portion right here, this is like our overview, um, Musa, he warned against following or going after other gods, right, other gods and their prophets, right, and then the prophets are those who speak of these other gods. Or, and, and you see, it's interesting because most folks will say that it's only these people who so-called worship outer idols or whatnot, like from, we go to India or the Hindus or go here or there or other tribes. They say, those are idol worshipers. They don't recognize the, the modern idols. You understand? And, and, of course, we got to go here again because this is probably the biggest idol for the majority of people in the world, right? This, this, is, this is an idol, right? This is the one God. You see that God right there? This is the one God. What people do for money, you know what I mean, what do people do for money, you remember when, I remember Michael Jackson, that whole thing about him allegedly abusing some, 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 some children and everything like that, whether it happened or not, you know, I know not, but still, ones were saying, what, for that money he had, you know, some comedian, some nigga comedian, Lord, she's comedian, was talking about, I would be abused for that, you see what I'm saying, these are the gods, now that one coming forward and saying that, everybody's like, agreeing, like, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, you understand? Them all agreeing with that, those are like the prophet, that, that person speaking that is like the prophet, and these people are now being brought into other gods. See, because worship is the root of worship, right? But see, worship, when you worship the wrong, the wrong, the wrong um, idea, you understand? And the idols of these things, then it becomes whoreship. You know what I'm saying? It becomes whoreship. You become, that's what it says, whoring after other gods. You know what I'm saying? Whoring after other gods. And these who preach of these other gods or, or, or preach the, 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 the gospel in a counterfeit way, you understand? They are like the pimps. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're the pimps from the pimp pulpit. You know what I'm saying? They, they are pimping it. You know what I'm saying? They're pimping it because they're not, you know, because they're, they're, they're teaching false. You understand? And the interesting thing about these days and times that more and more as knowledge is increasing, some give thanks and praise. Some of the preachers and some of them out there really are waking up. You understand? We give thanks. Some of them are really waking up and, 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 and they're trying to, but they're seeing judgment. They're recognizing it's like they too was walking with blinders on or they too had, 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 had something covering their eyes or were not able to see. You know what I'm saying? So let's not just generalize, but on a certain level, we might have to give a, 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 a generalization, not focusing on people or persons, but so that ideas are made a little bit more clearer, so they're more digestible. Because a lot that's here, it's like when you go to a feast, if you're going to a feast or some banquet, right, and they say, like, everything, all you can eat, buffet, right? Well, when you go there... <laughs> I laugh because I think some people probably say, well, I do. You know, I, well, I was about to say that people will be like, um, you go there, you see a lot of different kind of dishes, and you don't try to eat everything. I mean, there are those greedy, you know, that's what they call it, greedy people, covetous, greedy people. And, and that right there is, 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 is a, yes, it's a sin, but, but, but that right there, you understand, is, is the problem. You know, and, and some of us also come to this word the same way. And I have to admit that there are times I see so much in the word, and, you know, you want to get everything at one time. You hurt yourself. It's just like when you're eating. You're eating too much. You know, saying you have to, like I say, digest the food, right? Notice what I say. Digest the food that's in your mouth. You know, a parent will say, just digest, you know, chew the food, or chew the food, rather, that's in your mouth. And then, then let that digest or live just. And the word digest, 
right? This word digest. If we study digestion, it's interesting because the the Ritua Hymenot, what we call the true faith, the faith that we contend for that was once delivered to the saints, as it's been preserved in our Ethiopic manuscripts and scrolls and by the faithful um, Ethiopians, right? We find that the word Tawahido means to be made one. Now, it's interesting because the word Mawahad, right, it means to fuse, agglutination, fusion, or oneness, but it also refers to digestion, which we find to be very, very interesting. You know, what, what happens in the body, if we eat something, some of it, remember, the food that we're eating is what? What, what is food really? Some people think food is taste, and they eat according to taste. You understand? But really, food, right, food is energy. Food really is energy. And I don't know if this has been happening to me. I've been looking at some things, you know, I get a little hungry, I get a little munchies, and you look at some things, and you look at them, and one time you would have craved to just eat it. But you look at some things, even if you're in the store or, or, or elsewhere, and you, you want to pick up something, you look at it and you can see that there's no energy. I don't know if, if, if that's going to happen. Maybe it's just happened to me, but you look at some food and it's like you're almost, you're not looking at the packaging. You understand? And, and, and you're looking at it and it's, it's like there's no energy. And there's, there's other foods there too that might not look all, that might not be all packaged, you, you know, um, marketed to, to, to sell or to seduce you or entice you. You know, like like fruits and vegetables on a certain level. You understand? And, and and it's interesting because if you look at fruits and vegetables and then you look at the processed goods, and I look at the packaging, and I'm, I'm speaking spiritually, but if you look at it spiritually, you can see that some foods don't have any energy to it. You understand? I mean, you'll eat it because of taste or because it's like being an addict. You understand? And, and they use a lot of these kind of... Uh, um, on what you call it, they use the kind of these like chemicals and everything to make it taste like they put these chemicals together. It tastes like banana. They put these chemicals together, it tastes like orange, or, uh, 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 orange, right? I was about to say orangerine. What is that? Anyway, they they, they put these um, chemicals together and can taste like anything. Chocolate tastes like spaghetti. Tastes like you know tomatoes or whatever like that. You understand? Know but it's not really that. So they could put it on a piece of paper, right? They could put it on a piece of paper or cardboard. Yovas, um, or empty calories. So I make that likeness in, in the word Tawahido. Because remember, this, this, this Torah portion is Re'e, which we say as Ra'i. Ra'i, it means a vision. But it's not speaking of just looking with the physical eyes. Although, if you can see it spiritually, you can intuit certain things from the physical. But you're not looking at it from physical to spiritual. You are looking at it spiritually, and then from the, what you see spiritually, you can see some of the, the signs as they manifest from the spirit. I, I don't know if you over what I'm saying on that, but hopefully ones can, you know, ones can receive that. The point I'm making here is that it's about the word, and we're going to touch on the first part is going to be on blessing and curses, right? That blessings and curses are all rooted in what we say. As Aras the Fari say, word, sound, and power. However, in Rastafari and in the movement and Rastaism and other things and, and show business and, and music and other things going on out there, we have gone further and further away as 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 a as a community, though many have, have stuck to that straight and narrow road, further and further away from the true source of our blessing, and our words demonstrate that. You know, one time Rastafari was speaking a very unique way. Of course, yes, it was patois, so forth and so on. But if you understand the, the, as you say, the science or the knowledge behind it, right? You know, like we say, forward ever, backward never. So how be it that we still talk about back to Africa? And the more we talk about back to Africa, we still are back away from Africa as a people. Instead of saying, if it's forward ever, backward never, it should be forward to Africa. Yes, there was a back to Africa movement. That's historical. But it's not actionable. Because the word, you see what I'm saying? The, the word, sound, and power. So we're going to touch on firstly the word in this Torah portion, the 47th Torah portion. 
it gives us an ideal opportunity because in this part of Shah, this Kufa, Musa, Mashua, or Moshe, he set before the Beta Israel the choice between blessing and curse. Right? He warned them against following other gods. In the words of giving high value, you understand, to other gods, other things. Like people say, man, if, 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 if you got money, you understand, and it was valuing this, giving this the value in your word, in your heart, in your faith, you understand, that belongs to God. You know, that belongs to the true God, the God of your life. You understand? The God of your life. You understand? The God that's keeping you alive, that is your life. You understand? Because all things were, were, were created was through Him. You understand? Through what? Through that Word. You see, the, see that Word, the, the teaching on the Word is, um, we hope that we're able to teach as much that we have been given, and may He give I and I more to share with the I, but one is get across some of the core, the basic elements in this Torah portion right here on the Word. Because we was hoping to bring this, 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 this idea about the blessing and cursing before, like a couple of weeks or even months ago, and we've, we've touched on it in other postings, but hopefully now this right here is like, okay, now is the time. The Spirit is saying, now is the time. This is the Torah portion. This is the Shabbat. Shabbat, this is the place. You know, this is the grace, this is the time, this is the opportunity. So Moses, he warned them against following after other gods, the gods of the world, what they give worship to, you understand? And their prophets, you understand? Or their media, we can say the media, like the media prophets, because if you see it on CNN, it must be true. Yeah, right. And Moses, Musa, he set forth laws of kashrut, kashrut, what we call the kosher. You understand? Know kosher, singular in the sense, and kash root. You understand? Know um, the laws of what is clean and what is unclean. Because remember, he says that he is kiddus, he is holy. Therefore, we must be kiddus. You understand? Know so he is looking firstly at our spirit, at our psychological state, our soul state. But he's also looking at our body. You understand? Know he wants his holy people who are holy in their spirituality to be, of course, healthy, you understand, to be healthy. See, some people look at this in a religious sense, that's just about what you eat, such and such, such and so on and so on, but, and, and they get it backward. They have, they have body, they deal with body and soul. They think if they get their body all right, then they'll feel better about themselves. That is almost like, you know, that's almost like, um, 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 like a crackhead on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a certain level. You understand, they're being deceived. The more they go into that, the worse it gets for them. You understand? Because there's really no life, no healing. That's a false God. But when we put it into its proper order, the Trinity in its proper order, first it's spirit, right? First it's spirit, then it's soul, right? And then it's our carbon organic structure, what we call our body. And, 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 and connected with the body are the other things of the material, the so-called five cycle or the physical world, right? But the things that we see are made of things that from our fleshy eyes we don't see. You understand? And they're made of word. This is the point. They're made of word. Right? You can see the movie Matrix and the Matrix when Neo, he overcomes that kind of death on the Matrix level. He's able to see the word in all of the reality. The word behind is the word that this makes up. But the others still had to look at the computer. You understand? They had to look at the computer screen. You understand? I think there's a very interesting truth that is brought forward. You understand? In that movie, especially that particular point connected with what we're saying, saying right now and what we're seeing in the Rai, in the Re'e. So Re'e in Hebrew is Rai, right? And the Rai is the vision, right? The vision. In fact, before they were called Nabiyat, in the Hebrew, Nabim, or the Jews say Nabim, before they were called Nabiyat or prophets, they were called Bale Arayoch, or Bale Arayi. So before there was a Nabiyat, because Nabiyat means one who is like a news bearer. You understand? One who's a news bearer because the, the prophet represents God's um, reporter, news reporter to the people. You understand? He's reporting the news 
to the people, what God has sent him forward to, you know, report or to testify or to warn or to encourage about, right? But now the Bale Rai is Bale, yes, it's Baal. Baal mean owner. You understand? That's what we, today is, is the sin of Balaam or Balaam because they want to own everything. That's what everything's about. I own this. This is mine. This is mine. So it's like an ownership society gone wild, and they do not give any recognition to the true owner. You understand? Like right now you hear about people taking land from people and, and this with land and pushing people off of land, but they forget that Jah, that Yah, he is the true landlord. You understand? He is the real landlord. You understand? So we have to keep this in mind even with the promised land, and therefore we don't get awfully fretted or frustrated if they say, oh, this tribe, the Automo, or this one or that one has taken some land. But who is the landlord? See, see, we're focusing on the land, but not on the landlord. You understand? Like one's focused on, 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 on healing, but not the healer. You understand? They're focusing on wealth, but not the giver and the maker of wealth, or the one who gives us the power, as Deuteronomy 8 and 18 right in the previous portion you need to highlight Deuteronomy 8 and 18 brothers and sisters and really pray on that and meditate on that right and speak those words you know take claim those words claim that right um and Moses so he sets forth laws of kosher root covering um the we, we say liberty today Rastafari says liberty others might say dietary but we don't say diet because diet, how's your diet? Did you die yet by what you eat? No, 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 no. We say live it. You say we say live it. Because it's live yet. Continue to live. So what we eat spiritually, you understand? And what we eat psychologically, you understand? In our feelings and thoughts, you understand? As well as what we eat physically, this is what brings us into a full of full. Right, but first and foremost, the root and the grounding of it is to eat, you understand, spiritually. You know, like the whole thing people say about, oh, it's about Jesus Christ and his body, and, and you're eating the body and the blood and stuff, and that's just like people in the world and cannibals and stuff. These folks are spiritually blind. And even if there are some Christians who think that actually, you know, the bread and the, and the, and the wine are literally you know, the the body, literally, they are blind to, they're missing the whole point of communion. You understand? And, and, and may Yah bring that clearer to you. But anyway, tithes, also tithes are set forth, right? And the sabbatical year, right? The sabbatical year, the Hebrew slave, the Hebrew barrio, the Hebrew servant, and yes, there is a Hebrew servant, and we have to understand that not by white men and Negroes and blacks and slavery 400 years. No, that's a, that's a totally different thing. See, that's when you get into a white Western Gentile world misunderstanding. You know, and you need to go to the root. You know, not to its last and worst um, manifestation. You know, the Hebrew slave, the firstborn animals, and the three pilgrim festivals, which are called the Shalosh Regalim, right? The Shalosh, the Shalosh uh, Regalim. So the first part we want to touch on is the choice between blessing and curses. And this is the main, this is the main part that we want to teach this particular Shabbat. And may, and may Jah in Joshua's name give us the, the, the clarity of, of, of spirit, soul, and, and, and body to be able to teach because it's so very important. You understand? The word is so very important. And, and see, this is when we, we got into some um, um, theological God word with some ones and ones, you know, saying, well, the word is just this or that, and it's not this or that. And, so, and see, that's why those things are very faulty. Because with, if you follow that faulty way, you'll never be able to understand this in its fullness. You know what I'm saying? If you don't recognize that Yeshua HaMoshiach, He is the Logos. You understand? He is that word, you understand, that has, that has made manifest, that word that has become flesh. But yet it's his word that we cause through the spirit, you understand, and, and our soul to become flesh and to manifest the, the blessing or to manifest the curse. 
In fact, just think about how people talk. Well, they talk about that they get sick every year around this time. Well, they talk about this sickens them. Well, they talk about this killing me. You know, they just say, oh, this thing is killing me. I mean, think about those, that, that use of word. The other day with my and I, brethren, we had to remind him he was going through a situation. He says it breaks his heart. We said, uh-uh, uh-uh. That word, my brother, breaks your heart. You, you know what I mean? You need to put your breastplate on. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't hit your heart. You need to have your shield, the full armor, the shield of faith. You know what I'm saying? So it's not literally, but it's using this biblical mythology. You see, because mythology is not a bad word. It's only become a bad word since the 1700s when the Europeans mixed up the meaning and made mythology seem like a fictional thing because they wanted to bring forward their mythology. But before that, myth meant a story, a, a symbolic story. The word myth is really one and the same as parable if we go to the root. Remember, Christ, he's taught them in myths. You understand? In myths, mythology. Not false gods or whatever, no, but he taught them in the principle of myths. You understand? Of parables, of symbolic stories. That's why he says, if, if I've taught you earthly things and you don't get them, and you don't understand this earthly thing, how am I going to tell you about heavenly things, you understand, which are so far outside of your flesh and blood paradigm? You know what I'm saying? Your flesh and blood paradigm. See, the devil, Satan, the enemies, the evil spirits and forces, they want to keep us in that, 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 that spectrum. They want to keep us only on that visible light spectrum. You know what I'm saying? The visible light is a very small portion of that spectrum. And now scientists, the, the, the metaphysicians, the scriptures, the ancients, you know, they all understood this more or less. But now this white Western Eurocentric science now is able to even prove it. And, and you see, a lot of people we told these things before they could prove it. They say, "Oh no, that's not true. No, you fantasizing. No, you're making up stuff. That's a that's a false concept." Now science, European Latter Day science, is able to prove many of these things. And now they're saying, "Well, now I can admit it because now they can prove it because now they have the technology." So you got to watch out for that too. You understand? Watch out for it for yourself, and then the Holy Spirit will give you the strength when you have to deal with others, you understand, to resist. You know what I mean? Build up your spirituality or your, your immunity. You understand? Um, see, some people have a faith-based, uh, what we call immune deficiency syndrome. You know what I'm saying? Not the physical AIDS, you understand, but there's a spiritual AIDS. I think that the spiritual lack of of, of, of faith and this falling away from that which is true is what's breeding all of these diseases, all these disasters, all of these things, and mainly it's being generated by the word. You know what I mean? It's like, um, you know when a child is watching a movie or something? And I remember this to, you know, observing children, and they're watching like a movie or something like that, or a cartoon, and the character on TV says or does something, and they automatically repeat the same thing. Now, if you ever try to tell the child, well, don't do that, such and such, sometimes if that child don't have, if you have not built up that faith-based foundation, it's like you're telling them, they'll listen to you, they'll say, yes, mommy, yes, daddy, whatever like that, and then they'll still go ahead and do it. We are like that, too. We are just like that as well. But let's get into this Torah portion right here. Um, verse 26, chapter 11, verse 26, it says, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey, if ye shema, if you hear, if you feel it, you understand, if you be obedient to it, the commandment of the Lord your God, of the King of Kings, your Father, which I command you this day. And a curse, if ye will not obey, if you will not shema, if you will not hear, if you will not feel it, if you will not be obedient to the commandment of the Lord your God, of the King of Kings, your Father. But turn aside. In other words, go, go, go astray. You understand? Turn aside. Turn aside out of the way. See that? Out of the way, the truth, and the life. Right? Which I command you this day to go after other gods. 
right? The gods. Like people say, oh, we all, we all have one god, but how come they never say his name? I mean, even if you don't know his name in the revelation of Rastafari, please tell me his name and what is his son's name. You know what I'm saying? If you know or if you speak the truth. But a lot of times people say, yeah, we all have one God. It's just one God. And everybody like, yeah, that's right, one God. And, and, and some, it's like that cartoon, um, South Park. I'm giving these examples to this generation. You know, I wonder how it will be heard in the future, but whether they will know what we're talking about. But South Park, that cartoon on TV, you remember the episode where um, Cartman and the rest of them are, you know, a, a part of like some Satanism and everything? And the people think that they're doing a Christmas thing and stuff like that. And they keep saying Lord. They keep saying the titles, but they don't say the name. You know, like you even see some prayers like like on Capitol Hill where they will say, And our Lord, we bless your name, O Lord. Well, where's the name? And where's the blessing? I didn't hear the name. I didn't hear a blessing. You know, and then the Cartman episode basically turned out that they were actually Satanists. They were actually worshiping, you understand, um, like Antichrist. You know, was, but the key thing was that they kept using titles, Lord. We all love the Lord, and you hear that, yes, Lord. We all love God, yes, God. But they never named his name. His name is not named among them. Of course, they say, well, that's separating church from state. And if we say his name, then all the group want to, that's why they have all these other kind of false gods coming into the equation. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says that they are gods and they are lords, but for us, right, for us there is one, because we are those who shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Achad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one, the King of kings, our Father. He is the one, right? Which, right, it says right here, it says, it says, it says which, um, these are the gods which you have not known. And saying, we, we, we haven't known nothing about this. Now people going after all these other, this is a part of what's going on in the whole New World Order, Aquarius generation, blah, blah, so forth and so on, right? Um, now he goes on to say, and it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God in the New Testament sends the King of Kings, our Father, have brought thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing, the barakat, upon Mount uh, Gerizim, and the Mergem, or the Rigum, right, the, the Mergem, the curse upon Mount Ebal, or Ebel. Now, these names that we taught before, and we still teach this because it's still true. You understand that the names also have, you know, um, more spiritual meaning. It, it, it helps us to see the fuller, the spiritual landscape. You understand? The spiritual landscape. Verse 30 says, Are they not on the other side, Jordan, Jordanos, by the way which the sun goeth down in the land of the, Ka on the, the, the Canaanites, right? The Canaanites or the Canaanu, right? Which dwell in the campaign or the champion. It says, this is champagne actually here. I don't know if it says that in your Bible, C-H-A-M-P-A-I-G-N, over against Gilgal, Gilgal, beside the plains of More, or More, right, or More, question. Verse 31, for ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God, the King of Kings, our Father, giveth you. And ye, y'all, shall possess it and dwell therein. Verse 32, and ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day. So we just read that portion. Now there are, there are a couple of different Torah portion readings, um, what we call the Aliyah. Hopefully we'll be able to deal with the Aliyah as well. Because when we speak about church, we speak about the Beta Christian, we speak when we're gathered together, there's a certain holistic, basic order. And it's just, once you get it, you'll think, how come we didn't know this? How come we wasn't doing this before? Because we were deceived. We were blind, right? And now, hallelujah to the King of Kings, our Father, and the Lord of Lords, Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Son of God, that we are blinded no more. From the goodness, we'll give you a portion of the goodness right here. Because in this Torah portion, it goes into a little bit more um, on the various different um, aliyah, 
the Aliyah is the going up to read. And I think this portion has seven has seven um has seven readings to it. Let's see if we go through this right here. Has seven particular readings to this. Is the first reading, second reading. I don't know if they have updated this, but there's a couple of different um, readings. This is a summary right here. There's a couple of different readings for this particular Torah portion. Um, we'll touch on that as well. That's the Aliyah. The Aliyah, right? Uh, the Aliyah right there. All right. Um, yeah, we'll check this out. It might have been updated. Um, but anyway, um, let's go through the first reading. Now, these... These readings, if you look at um, the portion right here, the Torah portion right here, it comprises, um, it constitutes right here Deuteronomy 11 and 26 to Deuteronomy 16 and 17. Now, what's very beautiful about the Metaf Kedus of the Imperial Majesty is that, that they will tell you about the close and the open portions and, and some, some, some of the Orthodox uh, Jews. We'll speak about it. If you see this right here, you see this paragraph right here? This particular paragraph right here, this is what we read up to here, right? This would be, some would consider this one portion. So these verses right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, these seven verses, right? And the first um, two readings are usually for the, for the Kohen or the Kahen and for the Lewi, the Lewi or the Levi. Right, these these particular two readings. Then um, the other reading, usually sometimes it's three. There's different readings for different holy days. It depends on how how long or how much the portion really um, entails. So there's a possibility that in our gathering, that those nibab bait, those who have um, mastered the fidel, you understand, can even participate because there's many different paragraphicals um, right here. And you'll see that we said 16 and 17. Well, this is chapter 16 right here, right? This is chapter um, 16, Asherah Siddis, right? And if you look at 17, verse uh, 17 is right here. So you can see that a paragraphical ends right here. And then the next portion would begin from down here. So you can see that there's a certain structure here. I'm just trying to point out a certain structure. So the Metaf Kedus of the Negus and the Guest is beneficial in more ways than one, in many different ways for I and I. And this is why, this is another reason why, you understand, we say it's so important for us to recognize that that is I and I, is a true Rastafari. That's our holy scripture. That we have our whole, not just the Bible, but the Metaf Kedus of Negus and Negus. And we have to grow up to him in all things and becoming sons and daughters, recognizing what is the, 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 the way, you understand, his way, you understand, what is his word, and what's the teaching of his majesty is very, very important. So what I want to do is, is, is um, touch on this perhaps in the next portion coming forward, we're a little past the hour mark, so brothers and sisters, uh, Shalom Rastafari for this 47th um, sabbatical portion, Bamarinya in Neho. Right, or the good is Wenahu, and in the Hebrew, Arre'e, uh, you say Arre'e, which is the Ethiopic Ra'i, which is the vision. So we pray that that Jah and in the name of Joshua, or that Yah in the name of Yeshua, Hamushia, the vain Ha Elohim, Hayim, open up your eyes, your ears, your your, your five senses and add to your five senses the other five senses, the spiritual five senses, you understand, which have not been opened so you can receive this word and receive his truth in these last days of the old system and prepare for Jah's new system, the kingdom of the Moshiach, the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. Shalom Rastafari.